Welcome to the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. And my name is the Indy Kid. Obviously, uh, not the outcome you wanted, but first and foremost, let's just say you couldn't ask for a better matchup going into the tournament championship. Two of the best teams in the country. A lot of people saying the two best teams in the country. East Division champs, West Division champs. The drama from a few weeks ago with Vitello and Dave Van Horn, although all that was kind of settled and downplayed, but still it's something to talk about. It was a talking point. Uh, and just you go back to the regular season series. We talked about it yesterday where each game decided by one run. Uh, balls playing for the tournament championship for the first time since 95, but I think they just ran out of gas. We'll take you guys through it. Maybe look ahead to regionals. Uh, several talking points tonight, but before we get going, help us out. Go ahead and smash the like button just below the video. Uh, just press that little thumbs up. If you're new here, welcome. We're glad you're here. Go ahead and subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. YouTube will let you know uh, when we're going live, when we're dropping new content, all that good stuff. But please smash the thumbs up. Let's hit the chat. See what's going on. Let's see who is hanging out. Rue is here bright and early and says, well, this sucks. Yep, it does suck. Uh, Donovan in the chat says, I tip my hat to Arkansas. They are just good. We're number two. Small details win games. That's true. Do you like how sometimes when I read the chat, I just make up the sentence? I kind of I don't say what they said. I, I, I give them the overall ski but i just make it up i just make up words michael is back from yesterday michael we were talking about you right before we went live said we hoped you showed up tonight uh arkansas fan he says great season for both arkansas and tennessee class act from both clubs i'm certain these two could meet again when it really matters uh go hogs congratulations michael uh, seriously we were talking right before we went live said we hoped you drop in uh, love interacting with fans like you keep it civil we can be respectful you can talk a little trash you deserve it good game congratulations uh, Fuse is here, wants to know the score. Uh, well, it's over. The score is over. <laughs> seven, to seven to two, Arkansas final. Uh, who else? Let me run through a few more names here. Who else we got? J.J. Banks is in the chat. Hello, hello. Troy is here. Ken Johnson is here. Hello, Ken. Come on in. Smash that thumbs up. Settle in. The Arkansas fans are rolling in as well. Uh, congratulations, Parker. You're welcome here. No problem at all. Keep it civil, uh, and we will have a good time. Is that a Clemson fan here too? Or is that Upper Paul Billy. for somebody Paul? else? Uh, that's that's a Clemson logo. So interesting, interesting. Every, all fans are welcome. Just keep it civil. Yep. And I guess that's where we'll start here. And going back to the to the series earlier in the season, we said the same thing. Then tip of the cap to Arkansas, best team in the country. There's no questions asked. They are the best team in the country. Uh, but the Vols did play five games in five days. Arkansas had the day off on Friday before beating Ole Miss yesterday. And I'm not making excuses. I'm just asking your thoughts, Indy Kid. Do you think this ball baseball team just ran out of gas today? No, I, I honestly, I think that the better team won. And, uh, you know, because neither team threw their ace today. Arkansas's got started the game had a 5.19 ERA. So, uh, you know, you need a, a guy with that kind of ERA. You need to light him up. He had some heat, though. Um, and then we got the typical Will Heflin effort. Four good innings, five fifth inning, falls apart. Um, and falls apart, I say falls apart. It's not like he gave up ten runs. He gave up three runs. But, no, I I just think a better team won today. That, that's really what it boils down to. I don't think Tennessee has anything to hang their head about today arkansas's number one for a reason and i saw somebody say be careful what you wish for nope don't regret it a bit if you're gonna be the man you gotta beat the man as the old nature boy used to say <laughs> i need to add i got that rogan laugh video i need to add one of rick flair with just a big woo i'm sure we can find ways <laughs> to use that uh throughout not only baseball but football basketball that would be a good one uh, to add so, yeah, we'll, we'll help one on the mound. We'll kind of get, get into it. We'll kind of go through the way this game played out. Uh, but, you know, something we talked about yesterday off air after, after the show ended, and I kind of wish we had talked about it on air, and that's the way that Tony Vitello has managed his pitching staff throughout the season. And, you, you know, you kind of talked about how that's a difficult thing to do. And how do you think he's done managing – because I think he's done just a picture-perfect job throughout this tournament – but then you get to the championship, you lean on Will Heflin, like you said. He 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 tends to go – he gets through that lineup the first time, and then he goes through the second time. He starts to struggle a bit. But overall, what do you think of what Vitello's done with the pitching staff in the tournament throughout the season? You know, 
obviously the outing by Camden Sewell yesterday really helped him, made him look like a genius. When it when it works, you look like a genius. When it doesn't, obviously you don't. Uh, but how do you think Tony Vitello's handled this pitching staff? Uh, a plus. I gave him A plus on it. He managed it the way he did. Uh, you know, one of the one of our listeners was laughing at me yesterday because, of course, we've made a joke about it. How I come in saying that the SEC tournament didn't matter, and then I kind of shifted gears on it. But and that was basically based on Vitello's comments. Is you know what I gathered listening to him. It was like. You know, Heflin's good to go. Camden Sewell's earned a start. We may see Chad Dallas and Blake Tidwell in relief. And then, obviously, he kind of flipped the script on that. But I think it I, – I mean, today was a little questionable, but I think he's trying to see what he's got for regionals for – and if it goes super regionals, if it goes to Omaha, you're probably going to need a little bit more than he did. I mean, uh, I always called him Connell. It's Connell. Well, the so. broadcast teams, it depends on who you're listening to because they call him both, too. So the, how are we supposed to know? I guess that's like right, Jarrett right. Garantano and Garantano. <laughs> God, you had to bring maybe, that name up. May, maybe Kirby will let us know before it's all <laughs> yeah. said and done. But, but uh, yeah, I, I think he's – again, it is very hard to manage a pitching staff. You've got to know who can start. You know, some guys are better coming in relief. Some guys are better starting out. I, I mean, I think he's done a fine job this year. I, I'll give him an A plus because, especially this weekend, I think he hit on all cylinders with it. You you know what you're getting out of Will Heflin. Most times he's not getting through the fifth inning. It's just I, I think it's just stamina runs out. Then four innings. He's fine, but I, I just think he runs out of gas in that fifth inning. I don't think it's anything other than that. And, uh, you know, just from managing pitching staffs, you see guys that get to that point and they just gas. And I think that's him as well. And then, you know, he brought in some guys you don't normally see on the weekend today, but I don't blame him. See what they've got for the tournament. I mean, Pleasant's, he, uh, what, he faced two batters and out. He's probably done for the year, unless it's an nice, absolute blowout. I, I've seen him pitch during the week some, and he's uh, – we'll see down the line. Right now, he's not ready to be a, a top contributor, but well, let's, I, let's I get, have no problem with how he's managed his staff. I think he's done well with it. Let's kind of run through the game, uh, let you guys know. I, know. I know most of you in here have already watched it, uh, but just kind of some, some momentum points for me. Obviously, Jackson Wiggins on the hill – for Arkansas, he comes out, man, throwing smoke. I know he hit 99 in the first inning. I don't know if he ever topped three digits or not, but, you know, he sits down Spence and Ferguson. Like I said, high 90s with that fastball. Jake Rucker, big double down the right field line. Drew Gilbert drives him in. Ball strike first, one nothing. Starting to get a little confident. Starting to feel pretty good. But as the game starts to play out, it's close. I'm wanting more runs. You know, everybody in the Talking Balls Facebook group is talking about how, you know, I'm not scared of cops. I am scared of cops. I wanted more runs because you know at some point he's coming in the game. And then bottom of the fourth inning, Luke Lipsius on first two outs. And you sent me a text right after this, but the Arkansas shortstop battles makes a big-time wow. play. Big-time play, sports center top 10 type play to end the inning. And you could just feel that, that momentum, that excitement. And like I said, you sent me a text, and you're like, man, I'm afraid – that play is going to get them going. And that's exactly what happens because the very next inning, that's when Heflin kind of starts to fall apart, gives up the three runs. It, but look, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Jordan Beck, big time throw from right field, gun down Gregory, trying to extend a single into a double. If not for that play, Arkansas would have had runners on second and third, nobody out. Uh, but Heflin ends up four and two thirds, gives up three runs on four hits, a couple of walks, four strikeouts. And then from that point, it's kind of pitcher by committee. And that's where, you know, we just talked about, you know, you said Vitello done a good job managing this pitching unit. My question is when you're here, you're to this point. I get it. I get it. You don't want to tax arms. You're looking ahead to regionals. But we are in the championship game. Do you not think, because he said yesterday in the press conference, he's like, you know, I could probably go to Blade Tidwell and say, can you give me an inning? Can you get three batters out? And he's going to tell me yes, but I'm not going to give him that that opportunity. So it sounded like yesterday Tony Vitello had made up his mind. He's going to 
ride and die with Will Heflin, hope he can get through the lineup two, three times, and that just wasn't the case. And then it's straight to the bullpen. I, I, who all did you even see? I, let me pull back up. I, McLaughlin I know there came was, in. Uh, yeah, McLaughlin, Will Mabry, Elijah Pleasance, uh, Kirby Connell, Connell, Hunley. Um, trying to think and then who, Rackers, who, Rackers. Yeah. So, so he went to a lot of guys. Not, not, and I'm, I'm not trying to criticize. I am not trying to criti criticize Tony Vitello at all. I know his eye is on the bigger prize, but at the same time, man, for selfish reasons, you want to see this team win that SEC tournament when they've got this far. You know, if you're back in round one, round two, whatever, it's fine. Let's let's look ahead. But man, when you're there, do you question Tony Vitello at all, or do you just let it go and let's move on? Uh, you didn't have Dallas or Tidwell available, so I think you're trying to you're you're trying to make do with what you have. Uh, I would have probably had. Um, I don't know. I may have managed it a little bit different if it were me, but. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to question him a whole lot on it. Um, we we saw a whole lot of guys today, so it's. I don't know, man. It's. Um, well, let me let me do this. Let me share. A, <laughs> it's it, it's hard to answer. It's hard to answer because you don't want to question the coach, a coach that's got us this far. Uh, let me let me. I've got the 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 numbers pulled up here, guys. We got sixty eight watching live. Help help us out. Go ahead and smash the thumb up. We got 33 thumbs up. And look, not everybody is a nice, friendly Arkansas fan like Michael. They are going to show up to this video and destroy it. The last time Tennessee played Arkansas, the thumbs down was annihilated. So help us out. Let's get that number rocking and rolling. There's 66 people watching live. Click that thumbs up. We would greatly appreciate it. So let me zoom in a little bit. I, I hate Chrome sometimes. Okay, so th this is what I'm saying. When you, you got Blade Tidwell, you got Chad Dallas, yeah, you say they're not available, but do you not believe that that those guys could have given you an inning? You know, McLaughlin comes in, gives you two-thirds, Mabry two-thirds. Could you not go to Chad Dallas and say, hey, give me an inning? And, and I know I'm second-guessing, and it, it, the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter. I even, in my head, look, being a fan, we question things, whatever. It is what it is. When Pleasance came into the game for Tennessee, top of the eighth, I'm like, you know, okay, I'll, all right, let's go. He hits a batter. He gives up a single, and then he immediately gets the hook, and Sean Hunley comes in. In my mind, it's the top of the eighth, so you're saying that Hunley's got two innings. Why not just go to Hunley, you know, right there to begin with? Because I think it's a, what, a two-run game at that yeah. point? And then yeah. Pleasance comes in. Of course, and look, Hunley – Hunley got shelled. He got absolutely shelled. He came in in a little bit of trouble. Nothing new for him. Uh, he gets the strikeout, but then he gets a slow ground ball, gives up the bomb. The wheels start to fall off. Before you know it, it's seven to two. Yeah. If it's next weekend, if it's any weekends after that, I go to Dallas or Tidwell when it's on the line. I'm not that worried about it this weekend. Uh, I maintain what I've said all week. Yes. I was fired up and wanted to win today, no doubt. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not throwing off my rotation for next weekend. I want Chad Dallas. I want Blake Tidwell ready to go as far as they can go. And if uh, if an inning impacts that, so be it. And I, I thought the I thought the Pleasant's move was a little peculiar. I thought that was odd. And I'm with you on that one. I think I would have just went Hunley or I would have went Redmond Walsh right there. I thought that was an odd move, but uh, I don't have a problem seeing McLaughlin, Will Mabry, and some of these guys to see what can they give you. Because your pitching depth is going to show out the rest of the season. You're going to need it because you're playing, you know, you're playing multiple days possibly. So, uh I don't know. that. That's the one move I would probably question is going to Pleasant as opposed to Hunley. Like you said, Hunley got hammered, but you've know you you've played the clip numerous times. I'll go to Hunley and be good with it. I yeah. think at four to two, I would have went to him and and tried to keep it close right there. And uh, I mean, hell, the first batter of Tennessee uh, 
cop's face was a bomb. So I thought they were too patient with cops, letting him get ahead too much. That was a, a but a, but I know we're talking pitching here. The Pleasance move is the one I question. Out of yep. And going back to what you said, being fine with McLaughlin coming in, I am too. And I'm fine with Mabry, Connell. It's the Pleasance move that, that confuses me because we even, you know, kind of wondered if when, when Sewell started, it, we kind of thought it's either between Sewell or McLaughlin, one or the other, of who's going to actually get the start. So it doesn't – I wouldn't be surprised if from the get-go it was we're going to throw Heflin out there. If he runs into trouble, McLaughlin's going to come in. But he had a short leash too. I mean, he he wasn't in there at all. He comes in the game, gets a fly out, Razorbacks up three to one, but it, it's he only goes two-thirds of an inning. He, he gave up a walk. Let's see, what else did he do? He, oh, it, th this one made me laugh. I'm, I'm looking through my notes here trying to trying to get my head on straight. This one made me laugh because we talk about Tony Vitello and having that gut feeling and when he decides to to go out and get a pitcher off the mound. He comes in and he gives up a walk with one out, and then he goes to make a pickoff move, almost throws the ball into the bleachers, and Tony Vitello's had enough. That's when he goes and gets, <laughs> gets him out of there. It's not even after a pitch. It's after a pickoff move. It's just – I thought that was funny. Yeah, that is. And there's certain things as a coach that piss you off sometimes. <laughs> yeah. just, you know, it's little thing you expect. You know, you're a guy like Tony Vitello. You're very organized. You have what you're expecting. And something obviously didn't go according to plan right there. And it just, he had enough, but. Let me hit this comment from Joshua uh, real quick. He says, I think we won too much and we were overconfident against a team slightly better than us. I don't know, man, because watching this team all year long, there have been so many moments where I'm like, there is there is no way. Going back to the walk-off, Max Ferguson's walk-off against Arkansas a couple of weeks ago, I had no – so I don't have a problem with a team that has confidence. I, I like – you know, and I think Tony Vitello preaches it. You know, keep things calm, cool, and collected. It's business as usual. You start putting that added pressure, you start getting tight – just to make a comparison to football, look at that football team last year. That football team was so afraid of making mistakes that it 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 kept them from performing at their potential. Whereas this baseball team, I feel like they're loose, they're loose, they're relaxed, and they're ready to play at all times. So I I, I, I like the overconfidence from Tony Vitello. Yeah, um, I'd say we can take those stats off screen. Gets back to you want to see go. your you want to see your beautiful face. I wanted to break the camera here, but uh, okay. No, I, I have uh, no. I don't think they were overcome. I say it again: the better team won. That's what it boiled down to. Let's let's not overthink it right here. Um, their middle infield, man. That's a you know they said it on the telecast. Uh, those guys play major league ball right there. At, some of the plays they made were awesome. I mean the way they rolled double plays. That was uh, – you just got to tip your cap, guys. That's what it boils down to right here. Let's don't overthink it. They weren't too confident or anything like that. They uh, they just got beat by the better team. Sometimes you – that's just life right there. And, I again, I hope we see them again in Omaha. I hope we get to Omaha, first of all, but I hope we see them again because you can sit here and tell me, be careful what you wish for. I wish to beat the best because to be the best, you got to beat the best. And that's not me having any disrespect at all for Arkansas. We're going to have to go through Arkansas to win it. That's just what it. That's just bottom line. <clears throat> Do you think the way Tennessee performed in the SEC tournament? Because it seems like at the beginning of the week there was a lot of talk of number four overall seed, whereas today it was all about Arkansas number one, Tennessee number two. And I think this is, again, something that we talked about last night off air, which I, some of our best conversations about UT athletics are off air after we end the show or before we go live. But we, we were saying that at this point, and, and maybe we've got the orange glasses on, it feels like Tennessee is a better baseball program than Vanderbilt right now. We said that on air, and I'll go on record saying it right now. Vanderbilt faltered down the stretch. Their two top pitchers got beat in the tournament. Now, granted, they got beat by Arkansas and Ole Miss. That's two of your 
at worst top 10 teams in the nation, if not top five teams right there. There's, that's nothing to hang your hat on. But, you know, when you compare Tennessee's resume versus Vanderbilt's, and I know Vanderbilt got them two out of three, the rest of it, man, Tennessee won the East. Tennessee went to the SEC championship. Vanderbilt did not. Vanderbilt did not even make it to the semifinals. You know, the lines today by D1 Baseball had Tennessee's a two. And I think at this point, Tennessee's no worse than a three. Because I think you're, it's debatable whether Tennessee or Texas are two or three right there. But uh, there, there's no doubt if, there is no doubt at all, Tennessee should be ahead of Vanderbilt when it comes to selections tomorrow. There's no reason at all. I don't I don't care who Vanderbilt has. The bottom Other line than is, bias. It's nothing but bias. When you win the division over Vanderbilt and and you go deeper into the tournament, and I know we talk about does the tournament matter, does it not matter? I don't care. When you win the division over Vanderbilt and you go deeper in the tournament than Vanderbilt, then how, how – the proof is in the pudding. It's on the field of play. Settle it on the field. It has been settled on the field. The only argument that you have is that Vanderbilt beat Tennessee in a series, but that doesn't matter when you look at the overall body of work. Uh, Big Dave, Texas is ranked number two, bud. Check your rankings there. So, no, I'm not nuts. Texas is ranked number two. Um, somebody said Arkansas. Won't. Who's going to win it then if Arkansas or Tennessee doesn't? Come on, guys. Know what you're talking about before you chime in here. Um, uh, I mean, seriously, Arkansas is number one. Tennessee's number four coming in. They probably climbed based on this weekend. Vanderbilt probably dropped. Texas won a strong conference, man. They're uh, – we'll see how it goes right there, but uh, it's going to take Arkansas, a lot to be Arkansas. I, and – Arkansas is law. I'm looking at their their record, and yeah, absolutely, Ted. Vandy could win it. There is no doubt Vandy could win it. I mean, they've got that. Vandy's top notch team. Uh, they didn't play. They haven't played their best this weekend. But yeah, you know, you get hot for three weekends. You can, and they can do it. I mean, they. They've got two of the top five prospects. So, I mean, I don't think anybody would be shocked if, if Vandy wins it. But uh, let, me hit, let me hit this super chat real quick. Travis Adair, uh, I think he is a Talking Vols fan, but he's an Arkansas fan, and that's fine. All, all trash talk is welcome as long as you keep it civil. But thank you for the $10 super chat, Travis. Uh, he says, hey, Indy kid. Oh, this one's personal. It's coming directly at you. I just came by to gloat. Not just kidding. Respect you guys made a sweat for two innings. Plus... You have scored two runs off cops. And he yeah, loves he gave you, me I a, think. Yeah, he gave me a hard time about saying it didn't matter. And then I got – no, he's a cool dude, man. He's appreciated him listening, uh, appreciated his good banter on it. Uh, man, come on, Big Dave. Drop the crack pipe. Look in the mirror, dude. Come on. Texas is tough. That the Big 12 is uh, – it's a good baseball conference. Yeah, Texas Tech, TCU, Texas – Three top-notch teams, that's, you know, not all conferences are as deep as the SEC. You should know that if you're a, a true SEC fan. But, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, Travis. Uh, yeah, Alfie, Vandy's pitching hasn't been good late. And we say he hasn't been good. I mean, it's not like has been dominant. Up. It hasn't yeah, been dominant. Exactly. As they were throughout the season. Yeah, Vandy, I like what Michael said. Vandy, Texas, Arkansas, Tennessee, Ole Miss. Yeah, I agree. Ole Miss is a sleeper, man. And people asked yesterday, does uh, does Ole Miss have a shot to beat Arkansas? Yeah, they gave them all they wanted yesterday. It's uh, again, I say half the field in Omaha is at least SEC, if not more. And I think there may be a surprise team or two that comes through it because I think honestly, Arkansas, I think Tennessee should go. I think Vanderbilt should go. I'm curious to see. Uh, I think Ole Miss will go. Did you say Mississippi State? Mississippi uh, State. We'll see. Mississippi State got run rolled twice. Twice. Week, so. Twice. And, you know, I know we talked about the Diamond Vols podcast off air some too, but, 
you know, that was Ryan Shumpert's pick to win the whole tournament and run rule twice and out. But how much does that impact their seating and, you know, where, where they're at in this thing moving forward? They'll still host, I believe. I don't know about super regional, but they'll definitely host a regional right there. And, uh, you know, I, I saw some interesting stuff on – evidently teams have to – these colleges have to bid or put in to host the regional – because on the on D one on Kendall Rogers projections, he has Old Dominion as a one, but they're going to he hasn't gone to Spokane, Washington. He said they didn't bid to host the regional. So I thought that was very interesting, right there. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. It's yeah, I, I I think Florida could surprise some people. Florida's got a good baseball team. Yeah, Florida's a good team. Did you did you see where they were bringing in extra ble- bleachers into Lindsey Nelson for the regionals? It didn't look like a whole lot of seating, but they were bringing in extra bleachers for the third baseline. That was a, mentioned. That's a good move. That's a good move. Well, that was one of the things during the telecast, and I said, we've got some talking points, and this is one of them I interviewed uh, by telling the dugout, and one of the points they made, I can't remember the questioning, but – you know, what what could be added. And he said, if you look down that left field line and that outfield right now, he said, that's what we need right there. And, and he mentioned what you said about bringing in the temporary bleachers. And he said, we need to. So that's going to be one of the bargaining chips in keeping him is getting those left field bleachers, getting that outfield, you know, built up right there. So that's, a, that's an interesting point. And that's, that's going to be part of the pay Tony V. Is left field and outfield, no doubt. Yeah, about and it. I mean, there's 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 a ton of room down that third base side where uh, you know in those picnic tables and all that stuff, it, it it is kind of a cool look, but a cool look don't matter when you can put I don't know how many fans they could fit in down that third baseline, but yeah, they need to do something. The fact that they're bringing in bleachers, they know, they know, you know, and we've talked about it on here time and time again. It doesn't matter if it's baseball, it doesn't matter if it's tennis, it doesn't matter if it's croquet. If Tennessee athletics are winning, people are going to show up and they're going to show out. Look at the atmosphere for that Vandy series. Look at the atmosphere for that Arkansas series. Now let's add extra seating. Let's let's build it up a little bit. And like you said, I think that is crucial. That's key for Tony Vitello sticking around. If you had to put a percentage on it, what do you think it is for him, for Tennessee and LSU? 60-40. A lot of people are saying 50-50. Nope, I think he's staying. Hey, he had a shirt on today, uh, post game. I did not personally see it, but a buddy of mine sent it to me that said loyalty. And uh, I don't think the guy's looking to leave. And uh, I don't know. I The big question, and, and my wife and I discussed it earlier because she's – she knows a little bit about the, the college donations and stuff. These donors are not just throwing money to do what you want. They're specifying where it's mm-hmm. going. So do, or I'm sorry, not do, but does Tennessee have donors specifying, hey, let's let's upgrade Lindsey Nelson. Or, that turf, yeah, somebody mentioned Haslam paid for the new turf. That's a pretty brand, pretty new turf that they have. At Lindsey Nelson, uh, it's just I, I think it's all. Uh, it's not the actual field itself. The field itself is fine mm. in Lindsey Nelson. It's everything around it, but um, we'll see. It, it it goes much deeper than just pay the man, and uh, and it, yeah, I, I'm with Terry Reed. I don't think Vitello is looking to leave, and uh, you you assure him. You're going to upgrade facilities. I think he's staying, and uh, I think he likes it there. He, he said it the whole time, and he said it on when he's come on Swain and other ones, that he's basically put it out there. You show me an atmosphere, I can't leave, and I won't. And the UT fans have responded. I mean, that they re- at- yeah, that they responded. They responded to Vandy series. They responded to Arkansas series. They responded in Hoover. I mean, it was a home field advantage as far as fans today. Yeah, they I mean, talked that, about it on the broadcast. They talked about how how many people had on orange. Yeah, yeah, the fans have done their their part. But I, I and I think the thing is, 
baseball fans, I think there's a lot of new baseball fans coming in. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. That's a great, great problem to have. It's not even a problem. But they think the solution is pay the man. I, look, I, Tony, Tony Vitello is going to get a raise. There is no doubt about it. Mo, I don't think money's the problem at all. It, and I know we've said that every single episode. Every episode we come back to it and talk about the upgrades. I think that's what's more important. The money's going to be there. He's going to get paid. And he deserves to be paid. Man, I mean, people are using that battered ball syndrome. I'm, I'm not saying he's staying, but... I think there's a better chance than not that he stays. And, you know, I'm just trying to look at it positively. And I look at it, I just don't think he's a guy that's looking to leave. You know, yeah, you're going to need to pay him. But he just, he makes mention when he goes to other teams' places that have nice facilities about the atmosphere, about the facilities and stuff. You know, if you're not reading between the lines, guys, I don't know what else to tell you. He's basically telling you each time he gets interviewed and he gets asked about things, what it's going to take. And um, if the UT administration, if Danny White and stuff, if, if they can't read this, I don't know what else to say right there. I mean, he he's basically, without saying it, he's saying it. He's so telling put, you me, update, upgrade the facility. That's what he's saying. Let me let me put a let me play a little devil's advocate. Let me put a little spin on it. If he goes to LSU or he goes to Texas A&M, I think it's going to be LSU if he leaves. I don't think it's going to be Texas A&M. If he does leave, I see a lot of people saying if if Tony Vitello gets away from Tennessee, Danny Watts on the hot seat. He's already lost a battle, and it's a huge thing that they need. It's it's I, I'm not. I'm not even going to make a compare. I was going to say something. I'm not going to say it because I know I'll get crucified if I do. But we know we have a winner. We have a winner. So if he gets away, is it is it Danny White's fault or is it simply a matter of that's what he wanted to do? Because it does sound like he wants to say here. I played the clip yesterday talking about I have a job that I love at a place that I love. But if you also hear him talk sometimes, he talks about you know the commitment, what it takes to be a coach in the SEC. He talks about being single. A single guy can pack up and move if the money's right or if I want to be in Texas or I want to be wherever. The, he has no commitment to Tennessee. But I like the fact that you mentioned the loyal T-shirt. I wish we had a picture of that. We would show it. But if he leaves, how much goes on Danny White or how much is Tony Vitello just doing what he wants to do? I mean, it depends. I mean, are, are you offering upgrades? Are you offering pay? I, I Honestly, I feel this fan base is just looking to pit put Danny White on the hot seat. I agree with that. He, too. he has not endured himself to the fan base, fair or not. Um, I think there's some truth in what Danny White's done. I think there's – I think, you know, you need to make your comment move on. I don't think you need to reiterate about the negativity. And uh, Danny White doesn't understand what the Tennessee fan base has been through. But, you know, if they offer him a, a sizable raise, if they say we're upgrading – Lindsey Nelson, we're upgrading facilities, and he still leaves. What what else can you do? Right there. So, I mean, if they're only able, if they're only willing to offer him a raise, but they say, you know what, Lindsey Nelson is what it is. Your facilities are what they are. That's all we're offering. Yeah, y you've got some blame to go around, and maybe that comes over Danny White's head. I, I if Vitello leaves, I don't think it's going to be fully on Danny White. I've said it before. It's going to brew down to previous administrations dropping the ball with baseball, and that's where it's going to come in. We need some of these donors who are dead set on football to transfer over to baseball, and I've had that rant this week. Hell, man, they – my wife and I were talking about it earlier when she was in school at Tennessee, this was early 2000s. They were upgrading Neyland Stadium then, and they're still upgrading it now. That upgrade's never going to finish. So where, the, where is that money going right there? Um, the problem is no matter what, no matter how you spin it, Football is the cash cow. It is. And it all. It always will be. So it's uh, Neyland is always going to take priority. And look, I mean, you and I, we love the football program as much as we do the baseball program. We want to see all athletics succeed. 
But no matter how you spin it, that football program and Neyland Stadium is always going to take priority, always. Well, I mean, when every coach and staff for football comes in and every strength coach needs a new weight room, give me a freaking break, man. Weights are weights. If you can't make do with the weight room that's had hundreds of thousands of dollars put in, your ass needs to hit the road. Just look at Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou, all that dude had was buckets with cement in them. And that dude's jacked. We don't need a weight room. He's the baddest man on the planet, <laughs> and he had nothing. Don't give me his crap that you need a new weight room to invest. Nope. If you're a strength coach coming in and you need all that, get your ass out of here. You you don't know what you're doing if you can't make do with these weight rooms that they're inheriting down there. And we're going to put more money into another weight room or or more turf or, or what have you for football and we're going to continue to neglect baseball. Baseball is the program right now. It's ranked, you know, nationally top five. It's going to go along. It's got a legit shot to win national championship. Yeah, we're going to have to get through Arkansas. There's no way, but uh, no doubt. But come on, man. Let's put some money into this baseball program because this conference, for as good as it is in football, it is even better in baseball. And I know baseball is not the cash cow. But baseball is growing, and this ESPN Plus deal that you and I have praised over is only going to bring more eyes on SEC baseball that have not been there before. There are so there are so many people just in the Talking Balls fan base alone that are talking about how hey, I'm watching baseball for the first time. I love that you guys are covering it. You guys are giving me your opinions, and I can actually watch the games. and And I want to say this just to show, it, like it dropped off a little just now, but we just hit a hundred and five viewers on a baseball post game show. Let me let me let me educate you guys. Let me educate you guys real quick. Just last season, football Wednesday night show every Wednesday night seven o'clock. We're right here on Talking Balls Live. Last season. The football shows on Wednesday were getting 50 live viewers, and now we just hit 105 live viewers on a baseball show. Don't tell me that fans will not show up and show out for baseball. Uh, all 105 of you, I do appreciate you being here. Please smash that thumbs up for me. We got 63 right now. Let's get it to 70. There is no reason why we cannot give it to, get it to 70. We're going to go ahead and transition. We're going to talk about regionals. I see somebody in the chat talking about if we think that Tennessee can make it to super regionals. We'll talk about all that. But first, I want to do this. I want to share out the official merchandise of the Talking Vols Network. You can go to bonfire.com slash store slash Talking Vols. Uh, pick up the merch. It, it, it just not only do you throw a few bucks our way, you know, the super chats are great. The views create ad revenue. All of that is great. But it's also marketing. You are helping spread the word for the Talking Vols Network. So you can pick up the uh, what, what did JP call these now? They're uh, they're not antiques. They're. I don't remember what he called him. JP's gone. We need an X on that T-shirt. But also, if you're a basketball fan, we got Vol Hoop shirts. Uh, and spoiler alert, next season, we're going to have Vol Baseball shirts. We're, we're, we're trying trying to work on a design that looks like a baseball jersey. Maybe throw a number on the back. Not sure. Trying to figure that out. Uh, but my favorite, I'm wearing it now. Talking Vol State Pride merchandise. And then the old school logo merch. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. If not, that's cool. You guys can just click that thumbs up. And we would greatly appreciate it. So let's transition. Let's talk about regionals. Let's talk about super regionals. Let's, uh, but I, I guess, again, you know, talking off air, my mind always goes to pitching. That's the first thing I start thinking about. And we talked about, you know, the management of this pitching staff. And we've talked about how he's managed it throughout the SEC tournament. We've talked about, you know, today, what he could have done, should have done. You know, it's all in the past because we're moving to regionals. We're moving to what matters. What's more important, the SEC tournament championship or a national championship? All bets are off as we move into regional, super regionals. We're going to throw Blade. We're going to throw Chad. It doesn't matter. It's all about winning. And, you know, yesterday Vitello said the plan all along was for Camden Sewell to be the number one star or the number four starter in the postseason. And if he can deliver like he did on Friday afternoon, how far can this team go with those four guys? Heflin, Blade, Chad Dallas, and, and if, like I said, if you get Friday's Camden Sewell and you, all bets are off, this team can go deep. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Michael, have a good week too, man. Stop back in, please. Appreciate you uh, coming in. Yeah, absolutely, in. Uh, absolutely. 
Uh, I'll, play, I'll play devil's advocate on you. All right, you have to play it on. Who do you, you know who you're one and two are? You know Chad Dallas and Blake Tidwell. You go, uh, you know where I'm going. You go Heflin or Sewell as three. I'm a momentum guy. I'm a what have you done for me lately? I, I would probably, and, you know, we talked about it at the top of the show. Heflin, is, I love the guy. I, I love the guy. He struggles that second and third time through the lineup. But Sewell, on the flip side, doesn't have as much experience starting. But, man, he looked good on Friday. Looked good. on. I, 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 I would not be upset either way. Me personally, like I said, momentum guy, I would probably throw Sewell third. Yeah, I, I think so, too, because I, we've said it. You know what you're getting with Heflin. Two times through good, third time. That fifth inning, he just gasses out. I, I really think it's because it's – if it were just one time, I wouldn't think much of it. But it's pretty consistent, those Saturday or, or Friday, depending on when the series starts. Fifth inning, he's getting yanked. And uh, I just think that's that's his limit. Right there. Uh, yeah, I have a hard time not going Sewell. My my main thing was Sewell. I made comments on it a lot of times, especially when he comes in relief. Sometimes teams will get him early, and then he settles in. I mean, come right out of the gate the other day, lights out, man. I mean, he pitched an awesome game yesterday, and uh, that's my three. I'm with you. I think Heflin's my four, and, and if I don't have to go to – Heflin, I'm not going to him. I, I would almost make him long relief if needed. And the man, the thing, pitchers are nutcases. They are absolute nutcases. So maybe, maybe Camden Sewell is a guy that you know he likes knowing that he's going to have the ball in his hand heading into tomorrow. Maybe he likes to know that ahead of time, and he can you know go through his routine. Versus being being a, a reliever is not an easy job. Showing up to the ballpark, not having any idea whether or not you're going to you know, even play and go, going into Friday's start, I've got his numbers pulled up here. The longest outing he had had was three and two thirds innings against Alabama back on April the 3rd. Outside of that, you're looking at, you know, three innings here, two innings, two innings, even a third, an inning, you know, two to three innings seems to be what his number was. And then he goes in against Florida and just absolutely dominates. I mean, his stuff was nasty all day. Yeah, and he's probably making a case to be a starter next year as well. Sure. I mean, you're losing Heflin. I mean, Chad Dallas could get drafted and hit the road too. You never know. Uh, I'm curious to see what this team's going to look like, how the draft's going to affect this team from a current team and their incoming class. But, uh, I mean, the, the regional looked at today has Charlotte as a two- I'm thinking it was like Ryder and Liberty. Yes, sir. Charlotte drilled Tennessee when they played this year. And I know Tennessee didn't throw any of their races. That would have been a McLaughlin start right there. But, uh, you know, that Tennessee's going to have a little fire if it's Charlotte, I would hope, because Charlotte put it to them. That was early in the season. But, you know, your best case scenario for Tennessee, and, you know, it's weekend to weekend right here. The next, you know, next weekend's regionals, the following weekend's super, the following's after that. You're, you're not going to see Elijah Pleasance on Sunday in the regionals, and that's nothing against him. I've seen him pitch numerous times during the week, and, you know, I think he'll be a good pitcher. He's got a little bit to go, obviously. Um, you We know we're four starters at this point, and I'll go Sewell over – Heflin. I just I don't trust Heflin over four innings. I just don't. And uh yep. and again, I'm like you. I love him, appreciate him and all that. Five innings is his that's his limit. That is his peak right there. And that's nothing against the guy. There's guys that that's their limit. That's his. It is who he is. Yeah, you what you I I go back. I want seven innings. I want seven innings. Yeah. And if, if Camden Sewell can give you that and Will Heflin can't. But, you know, the thing is, as you move into regional, super regionals, all, it's like I said earlier, all bets are off. 
So it's it goes back to the conversation that Tony Vitello, well, it wasn't a conversation, it was in the press conference where he said he could go and talk to, you know, Chad Dallas or Blade Tidwell and ask them, and they're going to say, yeah, I'll, I can give you an inning. If their back's against the wall, you can guarantee that they're going to have that conversation. Can you give me an inning? You're not going to see, you know, what what we saw today with with the relievers that came in. You're, you're not going to see, you know, Pleasance, like you said. You're not going to see rackers. You're not going to see – you're going to go to guys that you think can get it done because your back is against the wall, and, you know, that that's what's more important. Yeah, let me let me address old Big Dave. Right, he's that's still waiting buddy. on my text. I've, I've been trying to ignore him, man. I almost even sent you a message. Listen, man, I, I want you to answer this one. Can you answer that for me? Um, <laughs> Arkansas beat Tennessee seven to two. Arkansas's the one seed. Tennessee's the two or three seed. Yeah, that, that's my interpretation. Right there. Gotcha. On, uh, gotcha. Listen, gotcha. Big Dave, Texas is ranked number two. I'm not sitting here telling you they're better than Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Arkansas. I'm, I'm just stating the facts to you, man. Um, that's it. I'm not sitting here telling you Texas is any better than it. I'm just going by what everything says. Yep. Please do, Big Dave. <laughs> here you go, bud. Texas is ranked number two. They're ahead of everyone but Arkansas. They're going to be ranked very high. Come regionals tomorrow. Okay? I don't know what else to tell you. On it. Again, I'm not saying they're better than any of the SEC teams or anything like that. Let me let me let me ask. They Big are David three. Point. Okay, they're they're third. I'm sorry, they're third. You're losing the argument, man. Let okay, me ask Big drop, Dave. Dude. Let me ask Big Dave a question. Then we're not going to talk to him anymore the rest of the show. Big Dave, who are you a fan of? I've never seen your name in the chat. I'm just curious, and I'm sure you are tickled to death that we've got 90 people watching and we're talking one on one to you, and that's probably going to be over now. Uh, but I'm just curious. Just a quick reminder to everybody. I want to let you guys know selection show is tomorrow and the indie kid doesn't have to work. So he is going to be dropping a bracket breakdown. What selection show is at noon? What time do you think you'll get that out? Uh, plan on go going media immediately after. Okay, cool. Cool. So be looking for that guys. We'll drop it as soon as possible. Uh, the indie kid, bracket breakdown as we move into regionals and super regionals there's no reason why tennessee if they get through regionals they'll be hosting a super regional backs against tennessee the wall said, yeah tennessee just last worst case is gonna be three and you know i texas is gonna be a, a top five seed it just is what it is and uh you know we'll see what they're made of when it matters but you know tennessee i think worst case is third and possibly, I think there's a very good chance they're going to be second. Everything but, uh, they said today, I, and I never can remember the name, the guy that you love for baseball coverage, they go to him all the time on the broadcast and talk about his predictions. And, I mean, he's everybody, oh, has, Tennessee, everybody has Tennessee as a two. Yeah, Rodgers. Yeah, he's had – he had Tennessee a two today. Oh yeah, gosh, that's – Dave, dude, that's, they're that's, – uh, yeah, I agree. Their schedule's on the SEC, but it is what it Just is. Just leave him alone. We got to wrap yeah. this show up. Is there any any final comments you want to make out the door? All, all I want to say before we wrap up is, again, tip of the cap to Arkansas, best team in the country. It is what it is, but I still want a piece of them. I still want a piece of Arkansas. And like you said, if Tennessee's going to win a national championship, if they're going to make it to Omaha, they're going to have to go through Arkansas. It is what it is. Yep. That's it. Um it's not a case of be careful wish you, what you wish for. It's a case of to be the man, you got to beat the man. And, and I said my ideal scenario, I want Vandy in the College World Series final to take two out of three from them. That is my dream scenario. Be amazing. Right there. Um, I don't know that. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, Travis, we want you again. You've gotten us three out of four, and uh, we're not oblivious to that. But – we know you're the top team. We know you're number one. And the only way we're going to win it is to go through you. So, yep. If, if you're a competitor and you don't want to go through the best, you need to go to the house. You're not a and competitor I, if you don't want to go through the best. That's the thing. No, and they, they are from hitting to their fielding to their pitching. I mean, they're top notch, man. They're number one for a reason. And 
I hope we see them again in Omaha because it's going to take going through them to win it. I have no doubt about it. And that's not, that's, that's not being disrespectful at all. That's nothing but respect right there. But you've got to beat Tennessee. To get, and, and hopefully we'll get to play Big Dave's favorite team, Texas, and uh, get to go through <laughs> them one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, if you have not done so yet, please smash that thumbs up on the way out the door. Press the like button. It helps the channel. We appreciate it. Also, going into regionals, super regionals, all that stuff, we are going to cover this the best that we can. Baseball sometimes gets a little tough. It's not like football where it's on Saturday and we can make arrangements, jobs, real life, until Talking Balls is paying all of our bills. Uh, we still have to work jobs, but we will do the best, whether it's going live after making videos, whatever. We will be covering this thing until Tennessee either is holding the trophy over their head or they've been eliminated. Uh, so make sure if you're not, go ahead and subscribe. Keep up with us. That's going to wrap it up for the Indy Kid. I am Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange. Hey, Big Dave. <laughs>